welcome to review time. I am your host, Iflip. Well, his computer, anyway. Today's review will be on Transformers. Dark of the Moon. Mechtech Bumblebee. Here he is in vehicle mode with the Mechtech weapon. It looks silly. I don't like it in this mode, so I will remove it. It has some nicely molded in detail. There you can see the Chevrolet emblem in the grill. If you look past the emblem, you can see the attention to the detail in the grill. Coming to the side, you can see a beauty fully molded and silver painted Autobot insignia. Unfortunately, though the wheels and the tires have wonderfully molded in detail, Hasbro decided not to paint in any of it, so the tall ifers and rims are all the same color as the tires. There you can see molded in mesh to the windows, but again, Hasbro didn't color it in also, the door handles have been left uncolored as well. I understand the need to keep costs down, but if I have to buy paint to finish the job they started, they should have marked the price down a bit more. At least they colored in the tail lights, and there is a nice looking license plate. However, there is an unpainted Chevy emblem. And does anyone know what 900 STRA means? And you can see a little blemish in the paint here. Looking under the car reveals way more of the Rosa than needed, ha ha. Let us hope he does not get into an accident while a Decepticon is flying overhead or he will be so screwed. All in all, it is still a very nice looking vehicle mode. Let us compare him to the Revenge of the Fallen Human Alliance Bumblebee. They aren't too much different in size, with the Dark of the Moon Bumblebee about an inch longer than Revenge of the Fallen Bee. Even though Fallen Bee is two years old, it still has a better painted detail scheme than DTOMB. Looking at the painted rims just proves my point. Looking underneath, Fallen Bee also hides the road the mode better. The OTMB seems to be playing peekaboo, hee <laughs> hee. Still, Dark of the Moon Bumblebee's vehicle mode looks good. Not great, but not bad either. Let's move on to the next mode. Using the mech tech weapon and some partial transformation, you get the vehicular combat mode that is very reminiscent of the stealth attack Bumblebee. Despite most of the guns being on the right side of the vehicle, I still like it a lot, and now the inclusion of the mech tech weapon makes sense. By the way, it has lights and sounds. But I took out the batteries because it is what you allowed for indoor use, and hearing the G1 transformation noise over and over was very annoying. Especially if you consider that they do not make that noise in the movies. <coughs> Here he is in robot mode, next to Human Alliance Bumblebee. He looked a lot bigger in the box. Still he looks fantastic. Though there are a lot of things I like on Human Alliance Bumblebee, I have to say that the leader Bumblebee looks much more like his movie counterpart. I still think Human Alliance Bumblebee's rotating breasts look better than leader Bumblebee's boobs, however. The arms legs and abdomen, crotch area is better on the leader one. Human Alliance Bumblebee still wins on the paint applications though. The dark gray plastic of the leader one doesn't look too bad, but the silver plastic on Human Alliance Bumblebee's hearts looks much better. I honestly thought that the leader Bumblebee was using the head and the hand from the Human Alliance one. They are basically the same size. The battle mask folds down exactly the same way, as do the hands. But the face has more detail on the leader one, and much less like piping plastic. Also, though the hands look really similar, they were engineered differently. Engineered. Is that the right term? Oh, well. We will stick with it. I am going to put Human Alliance Major Lennox next to him, since I cannot find my Sam with Wiki. As you can tell, they are way out of scale. I estimate that if Lennox were 6 feet tall, this Bumblebee would stand about 30 feet. For those who don't see the problem, in the movies Bumblebee was only 18 feet in robot mode, and Optimus Prime was 28 feet. Had he been this size in the first Transformers movie, when he had popped his crop cap off to pee on Simmons, the size and weight of the cap would have crushed his skull when it hit him. Still, I do not mind, as I do really love this figure. Now, let us attach the mech tech weapon and see what we can see. 
The first thing you will notice is that I am having a little trouble keeping Bumblebee from tipping backwards. He was already a little bit back heavy. With the mech tech, it really makes it hard to keep him upright, but I shall try. Well, how about I forget trying to get him to stand and we instead focus in on the beautiful details. Bill just hold him up, ha ha. From the front, the added guns look impressive. From the backer side, it looks like crap. Anyway, enough of it, let's take it off. Thank God it was not a real thing to be used in battle. Can you imagine having something attached to your back that was so heavy and awkward, that you couldn't stand without help? You would be killed in a second. There is great detail in the face, which I will show as soon as I catch the light right. The level of detail is incredible. But then again, this is a leader figure, so I would expect no less. Obligatory crotch shot, ha ha ha. There is quite a lot of hose ability. The arms go in and out at the shoulder, as well as 360 degrees of rotation. The arms have an upper bicep swivel and bend at the elbows. Unfortunately, the one hand does not have a wrist swivel, though the Human Alliance one from two years ago does, and the hands both fold and look almost the same way, so I don't understand why that is. His head rotates, but is not on a ball joint, so no up or down movement do He has no waist movement, but the thigh at the hip crashes in and out and forward and back. He has an upper knee that bends, and a lower knee or high ankle that bends. Out, so you can give him chicken leg stance as well as a regular ankle that pivots back and forth, but no side to side and huge feet with hose able toes. Oh, and his leg rotates right above the top knee. Provided you can balance him, you have a wide array of potentially dynamic poses at your disposal. He has this part that swivels out. I am not totally sure why. Maybe it is a sword. Maybe it is a gun guard. I have no clue. Maybe I should have read the instructions before I did the review. Anyway, that is the review. If you don't already have a leader Bumblebee, and you don't already own the 39 other Bumblebee figures that has both themes to think we want, then this is a great Bumblebee. If you already have a big one or the Custer Chuck of other movie line Bumblebees, pass on this one because there are other Transformers figures that are more deserving of that money. Bye-bye.